Okay, Elder Brandon Clay is pastor. Samuel Minnis Justice is 1 Samuel 7, chapter 3rd through the 11th verse, 15 through 17. Bible base is 1 Samuel 7, chapter 3rd through the 11th verse, 15 through 17th. Bible truth, God hears the prayers of the righteous. Memory verse, and Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering, holy, slowly unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. 1 Samuel 7, 9, King James Version. Lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, we will know the power of prayer and the purpose of praying for justice. Since God's call for justice in our community and pray for justice in our community, the country. Background scriptures, 1 Samuel 7 through uh, 7, chapter 3 through 17. Read and incorporate the insights of gain from the background scriptures into your study lesson of the lesson. Life need for today's lesson to apply the power of prayer for God's justice communities. Bible learning to learn how Sam used the power of prayer to bring God's justice to his nation. To begin to understand how prayer is a tool God gives us to bring his will on earth as it is in heaven. Students will discern opportunities to strategically pray for God's justice in their community and the country. Lesson scriptures for Samuel 7, 3 through 11, 15 to 17. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel saying, if you return to the Lord with all your heart, remove the foreign gods and the instructs from among you and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him alone. He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. <coughs> so the sons of Israel removed Baals and the instructs and served the God, the Lord alone. Then Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Six, they gathered to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fastened on the day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the sons of Israel in Mizpah. Seven, now when the Philistines heard the sons of Israel had gathered to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the sons of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Eight, then the sons of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hands of the Philistines. Nine, Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. 10, now Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. And the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on the day of the Philistines and confused them. So they went routed from before Israel. Eleven, the men of Israel went out to Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as below Beth Koth. Samuel's ministry, 15. Now, Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. 16, he used to go annually on the circuit to Bethel and Gilead and Mizpah, and he judged Israel in all these places. 17, then he returned, then his return was Ramah, for his house was there, and there he judged Israel, and he built there an altar to the Lord. Uh, biblical definitions, A, pray, 1 Samuel 7 and 5, Hebrew, to the plea, to intervene, to interpose, to arbitrate or even judge. Sin, Mr. Mark Aaron. Let's look at the light on the word. Samuel was a judge. He was a prophet and a priest who was obedient to, the, to God. He was familiar with the power of God. Samuel knew that the Israelites was worshiping false gods. They were not committed to the true and living God. The Israelites had suffered defeat by the Philistines when they had tried to use the power of the ox Covenant, the power of the Ark of the Covenant to gain victory in the battle. The Lord had given the children of Israel strict instruction concerning the Ark. Instead of keeping the Ark in the most holy place, they were disobedient by moving it to the battlefield. Now, who in their right mind will move this covenant to the battlefield thinking you could win? But early, God had killed the men of Bathsheba because they had glazed upon the Ark. 
the Israelites had experienced 20 years of sorrow because they had not repented of their sins. Sammy urged the Israelites to repent and called them to meet with him in Mizpah so he could pray over their behalf. The Israelites believed that God had left them, but they did not do anything about it. Sammy urged them to make a change or to repent. Sammy is one of the most intriguing of, of the Old Testament. Okay. Sammy was the son of Equahan and Hannah and was born in the answer to prayers of his barren mother, Hannah. She gave Samuel to Eli, the high priest of Shallow, for dedicated service to God. When Samuel was dedicated to God, he listened to God. Samuel was the last judge in Israel, and he encouraged the Israelites to commit themselves to God and serve him only. Introduction, Samuel is one of the most intriguing Old Testament figures, to me at least. He's a star player in the story of David and Saul the first two God anointed kings of Israel. We meet him as a baby. We see him as a national leader, an intercessor, and even a ghost. Here are a few interesting biblical facts about the prophet Samuel. Samuel is a miracle child. The Bible tells us of many significant adults, but only a handful of significant pregnancies, Isaac, Ismael, Jacob, and Esau, Chris, Samson, John and the Baptist and Jesus are the others. <clears throat> we meet Samuel's parents before we meet him. His mother Hannah could not have children, but God hears her prayers and opens her womb, blessing her with the child Samuel. Samuel names means name of God. The translation of Samuel sometimes spells Samuel when spelled in the English alphabet, literally means name of God, or God has heard. Samuel is from the tribe of Levi. Not only was Samuel from the tribe of Levi, but he had, had Imamite blood too. First, ch set, first chapter 6, 33 through 38, first Samuel 1 and 1. This qualified him to serve in the temple, but Samuel was much more than a priest. Sammy is the, is the last judge. You can read about, about the most of the judge in the book of, you guess it, Judges. After Joshua dies, the nation of Israel enters the days of the judges, Ruth 1 and 1, when there was a centralized government. During this time, we raised up individuals to deliver Israel from enemies, Judges 2 and 16. Book of Judges tells us about 12 judges. And the first Samuel introduces two more, Eli and Samuel. Why is Samuel the last? Because after Samuel, Israel is led by kings, Acts 13 and 20. Samuel anoints the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. When the people demand a national king, God directs Samuel to anoint Saul, a tall man from the tribe of Benjamin. Saul doesn't turn out so well. And so God has Samuel anointed a young shepherd named David as a future king. Not the king Israel needs, but the king they deserve. You can read all about this in 1 Samuel. Samuel is qualified to do this because of another office he holds. Samuel is the first of the prophets. Seven, Samuel is a priest. He begins his ministry serving the chief priest in the tabernacle, 1 Samuel 3 and 1. Samuel makes sacrifices on behalf of the people and offers into spirit prayer to him, 1 Samuel 7 and 9. Samuel is a Nazarite. Like the mighty Samson, Samuel is dedicated to the Lord as a child. This dedication was for life. And so he never cuts his hair, 1 Samuel 1 and 1, number 6 and 1 through 21. Samuel is the only ghost we meet in the Bible. After Samuel dies, Samuel meets with an e, e worker, a witch of Endor, 1 Samuel 28 and 7. The medium con conjures up the spirit of Samuel, who is, isn't happy about what Saul has done. You can read the whole story in 1 Samuel chapter 28. Samuel led the greatest Passover. Hundreds of years after Samuel's death, a king named Joshua celebrates the Passover. In such an affair, the author says it's the greatest Passover ever. 
well, ever since Samuel's day, 2 Chronicles 35 and 18. Eleven, Samuel is remembered for his prayers. The psalmist who penned Psalm 99 ranks him with Moses and Aaron as one who called upon the Lord's name, Psalms 99 and 6. God calls Samuel by name twice. Samuel is one of eight people in the Bible that God calls by name twice. The others are Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Martha, Simon, my God, which, and, and Saul. The two books of the Bible are named after Samuel, but he only shows them one, and that's because at first all of them was just one chapter. Mizpah, Mizpah is the name of the couple of cities mentioned in the Bible. The name Mizpah means watchtower or looked out. And it is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 31, 45 through 49. Mizpah in this passage was located in Gilgad, a mountain region east of Jordan River. Jacob had fled this scheming father-in-law, Laman, and was heading back to his father's homeland. Genesis 31, 3, 21. Jacob and his wife and children had traveled for seven days when Laman caught up with them. Jacob did not know what his wife Rachel had stolen from her father's household, and it was his household's God, and Laman confronted them about it. He was angry that Jacob had left secretly, taking Laman's daughters and grandchildren without saying goodbye. The two men had words, and Laman res resigned himself to the fact that they were leaving. Another misspot note of the Bible was located in the land of Benjamin near Jerusalem. When the Israelites gathered to deal with the controversy <coughs> concerning the Levites' Uchaban, they gathered in Mizpah, Benjamin, Judges 21, 21 and 1. Mizpah was used by the prophet Samuel as a home base, 1 Samuel 7, 5 through 6. And Mizpah was a scene of a great victory of the Philistine, verse 11. It was near Mizpah that Samuel erected the Ebenezer stone to remind people of God's help. Verse 12, Saul chose Israel's first king in Mizpah. Verse 10, 17 to 25. Later king in 45, Mizpah against enemy attack. Verse king, 22. Samuel Christ had come to Mizpah to pray and are for their sins. Mizpah was the capital of Judah after the fall of Jerusalem. Later, Saul would be chosen and Mizpah as the king of Israel's first king. Saul had the blessing, but not the approval of God in Samuel. Asherah, a city of Bashan, noted for its worship of Esra, Dunami, Deuteronomy, 1st chapter 4, Joshua 9 and 10, 12 and 4, 13 and 12. Goddess of the uh, Phoenicians and Zenodites, worshiped by Israel after the death of Joshua and by Solomon. I start with the city of chief female goddess and Baal, the chief of the male god, and they were often named together. Joshua destroyed the emblems of the, her worship as introduced by Solomon, Judges 2 and 13, Judges 10 and 6, 1 Samuel 7 and 3 through 4, 1 Samuel 12 and 10, 1 Samuel 31 and 10. And they put his armor in the house of Esther, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bashan, 1 Samuel 31 and 10, 1 King 11 and 5, 33, 2 King 23 and 13. Esther is often called Astar, which is her name in the Greeks, as Esther of Istran of Australia. The name of the Canaanite goddess of paternity, fertility, excuse me, sexuality, and war. She was the companion of Baal. Esther usually involved in prostitution. The ground was believed to be fertile when she was worshiped in sexual rituals. Eliza, whose name means God is power or God of help, had been selected to take care of the Ark of the Covenant. The ark was taken to a city named Kerzarum, 
which was near the battlefield because the Israelites wanted to be victorious in the battle. Unfortunately, their faith, faith was focused on the Ark of the Covenant, not on God. They believed it would bring them victory if it was nearby when they fought the Philistines. The Ark of the Covenant had become an idol for them. God should have been their main focus of their faith because God would not tolerate such a misplaced faith. They were defeated. Because of this defeat, the Israelites realized that God was no longer blessing them. The Israelites needed to repent and return to God. Samuel, who was judged, called the assembly in Mizpah. He directed the Israelites to pray and ask God for forgiveness. The covenant, the Ark of the Covenant was returned to Israel and brought to Kerjar Aram, and all the house of Israel laminated, laminated after the Lord. Samuel set forth the condition for deliverance, whereby the covenant fellowship had been broken because of their sin. In verse three, with all of your heart, in Hebrew is meaning seed of emotions and passion, the seed of courage, strong 1974. Samuel guides the hearts back to the one true God. He guides the house of Israel through the prescription of concentrating, them, consecrating themselves before God. As God chosen people, they must walk in obedience to the stipulations in order to receive his promise of mercy and favor, Exodus 19 and five. First, Repent and turn from worship their detestable idols. Turn from worship and astroth. Through tests and discipline, the hearts and minds of his people are as they turn toward him. After a period of estrangement because of their rebellion and apostasy, during which the promise of blessing and protection is deferred or delayed, the Israelites returned to their God as prodigals, not just agreeing to abide by the um, dictates of God's law, but wholeheartedly committing themselves to have no other God and serve him only. Gathering in Mizpah, Samuel directs the people to gather in Mizpah that he might intercede for them before God. National Assembly, where the people of Israel conferred to bring the Benjamite, Benjaminites to justice for autocracy committed against the concubine of Levi, Judges 21, placed for the National Convention of all the tribes of Israel in which Saul would be elected king, became the capital of Judah after all the fall of, Is of Jerusalem, 1 Samuel 10, 17, 2, King 25, 21 through 24. Pour water on the ground was acknowledgement that they deserved to be cursed for violating the terms of the covenant they sinned. In Hebrew, the word sin means miss the mark to bring into guilt or condemnation or punishment. This act is appeal for mercy in the knowledge that God honors a contrite heart that knows its bankruptcy. He is a merciful God who says, the soul sin it, it shall die, Ezekiel 18 and 4 provides a legal refuge with Sammy as his leader and judge of Israel in Mizpah. Sammy remains true to his word. Some transgressors find refuge by means of grace he provides. The people fasted and confessed their sins. Um, missionary, I'd like to make a comment. Okay. Um, Samuel called this the nation of to repent but we have to uh, actually bring out the point that he didn't want them just to repent outwardly, but he also wanted them to repent inwardly. So in other words, their heart, inward heart had to change. There are some that think just saying, I'm sorry, or, or just saying it because they were caught in certain situations, but you cannot just say, I'm sorry and not mean it from your heart because God knows our heart and yeah. whatever's on the inward part of us, it will reflect on the outward. So their outward uh, repentance would be for them to stop uh, worshiping the idols, the foreign gods that was mentioned here in our lesson. 
when it brings out Baal and Ashtaroth, when uh, they were considered as a male and a female uh, demon. The um, Baal was the god of weather and financial success. So they felt if they worshiped him, it would help the crops and it would also help their finances. And then uh, Ashtaroth, which is the goddess of fertility, it was connected to love and sex. It was They were female figures that were made out of bronze and iron. So what this lesson is letting us know that uh, there are some that worship idols and, and like the Israelites did here in the beginning and that was necessary for them to repent was the fact that they were worshiping the uh, ark the art of the covenant instead of God himself. So we can find ourselves in these times worshiping um, things that are idle. Uh, it can be cars, houses, uh, church building and not worship God himself. So we need to focus more on the creator and not the things that he just created. So in here is letting us know in this lesson that he does not, he requires us to worship him and him only. That's true. And it's it's like the day we worship and everything else but God, and we want the right to be wrong and wrong to be right. And we see a lot today in this country of right being made wrong. Nobody wants to tell the truth. Everybody wants to tell the lie and everybody's supposed to believe it. Right. So it lets, you know, uh, Israel show that their repentance they showed it by putting away the bad and pursuing the good. And that's what we, as uh, in today's times, we have to find ourselves not only bringing in good things, but we got to put away the bad things. So that's true. Um, the Israelites thought by worshiping the Ark of the Covenant that they were adding to what God was doing and how they worship him. But instead, they were worshiping the actual uh, Ark of the Covenant instead of God. So we have to understand, we have to put him first and him only, and not just worship the things that he's created. Or, or the things that he's given us. Yeah. Items. Exactly. Okay. All yeah. right. Did you finish this slide yeah. or do I need to move forward? I finished that one. Okay. Perhaps the Philistines sense an opportunity uh, now that they had all Israel's have gathered in Mizpah to to demonstrate the Israelites once and for all. Perhaps they felt threatened and mobilized their army. The reality of the attack of the enemy becomes more evident when God people turn away from and evil and against the evil influence of the world. And if we look at today's time. When we were out there in the world, we did whatever we wanted to do. But once we turned to God, the enemy really jumped on you and tries to make you go back to where you came from. But we have to be determined to stay with God no matter what comes our way. God's way is never without opposition and challenge. We know that we're doing right when people start getting on you about what you're doing. So no matter what's going on or what the world is coming becoming, we still must stand fast with God because we know in the end that we will win. That's true because is here it tells us in uh, that third statement, uh, the reality of the attack of the enemy becomes more evident when God's people turn away from the and turn away from and against the evil influence of the world. You can't just say, "Well, I'm going to add on some things that God wants us to do." but yet continue in the things that you did while you were in the world. So you have to do away with those things and then add as you go. So we know that, that the saying that has told us a majority of our life, as you learn better, you do better, but you put away those things that we used to do. Light on the word, victorious through prayer. And we know that we must constantly pray. No matter what's going on, no matter how it looks, we must continually to pray at all times. And if we continue to pray, we will be, be victorious through prayer. 
The Philistines knew that the Israelites were not gathered in Mizpah for a religious observance. They suspected that the Israelites were united in an uprising. The Philistines planned to attack the Israelites who wanted Samuel to continue to pray for them. And we know that we ask people asking all the time, pray for me. But sometimes people want you to do all the praying, but they're not doing their part either. The Israelites wanted Samuel to pray for their victory. And X kept ap. Heck, they had depended on the ark for victory. The Israelites now depended on the power of God for victory. And we know that material things and different things that we think have power don't have any power. The only person that has power is God and Jesus Christ. And if we pray and put our sight on him, we will win. Amen. And we got to remember here at this lesson, let us know that Samuel was used by God all his days. You brought out oh, at the beginning that he was a Nazarite. And we got to um, hear as Samuel prayed for the Israelites in the battle, we have to understand that the Lord won this battle, <laughs> not Israel. So when we go through, we have to remember that there are some that pray for us. And when the battle is won, it's not you or the person that's praying that we in the battle, but it's God who wins the battle. It's true. The victory is his. God ex executed justice for Samuel 7, 8 through 11, 15 through 17. The Philistines had endured a final defeat at the hands of God. Now, if we look at this first verse, it says at the hands of God, not the hands of the Israelites, but at the hands of God. No other battles between the Israelites and the Philistines when Samuel was judged. Because the Israelites' obedience, God executed justice through Samuel. Like the Philistines, we may need to remember that personal victories that God has given us. When we are experiencing difficult moments, the memories will help us to endure. Because all you got to think about, well, he delivered me last time, he'll deliver me again. We have faith that God has already given us the victory if we endure, if we see it through to the end. We just can't stop and think we'll get the victory. Are there any comments? If someone has a comment, you may uh, raise your virtual hand and I see it. I don't, okay. You may go on, I don't see any hands. I'm waiting on the next slide. Okay, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Psalms 24 and 8. It is when the battle is the Lord's and all that is left for the Israelites to do is to pursue the scattered Philistines and slay them. The battle was the Lord. The Lord had already given them the battle, but the Lord is the one that is just fighting the battle. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life and he done righteous. He was a righteous judge. God won the battles for the Israelites. Once again, man didn't win it, but God did. And he used Samuel until Samuel's death to continue to judge the Israelites. So Samuel had to be a just man. He was a just man and a righteous man. Therefore, Samuel administered justice when he helped the people to repent and turn their hearts back to the true and living God. Follow God, no excuses. No matter what happens in our life, we must follow God. There should not be any excuses. A lot of things will come upon us upon us to make us want to turn back, but we have no excuse because we know we can look back where we came from and know that God has always delivered us. The Israelites deserve to, re to remove any obstacles or sin that it had left, led them to their defeat and subjection by the Philistine. And that's just like us, whatever sins we have, no matter what it is, we need to be seeking to remove them so we can be closer to, to God. They need to reaffirm their conven conventional loyalty to God to receive his blessing. Samuel prayed to God on the Israelites' behalf and God saved them. He brought justice. Now we can go to God for ourselves. We don't have to go to any man and, and 
get him to pray for us, but we can pray for ourselves. Our commitment to God should be continual, not off and on, but we should be praying continually every day, every minute, so that God will show us and direct us on how to live our life. If we are distracted and place anything before God, we should seek him and repent. Okay, I just wanted to make a comment uh, based on this slide, and we have to remember that in a covenant, there are two sides to it. You have to understand that when, when the covenant is made with God, he tells us what we need to do. We agree to do it. And then he also tells us the outcome for being obedient to what he has told us to do. So we cannot always, you know, I've seen several times through our life where <coughs> those that, that say that they are waiting on God's promises. But how, however, they did not um, pay attention or they did not do their part in the covenant. So if you want to get the blessings and the promises of God, we have an obligation to be obedient to what he told us we need to do and not just focus on what the outcome of what we want him to do. But we have to put a lot of focus on what we know he's told us we need to do in order to get those blessings. So that that is the... It's better to, the word lets us know it's better to not make a covenant than to make one and break it. That's true. We can easily make excuses, but we must follow God. And it, excuses are nothing. We see them every day as we teach school, as we're in our daily lives with our coworkers, it's always excuse. You know, they're always find, trying to find excuse to keep from doing anything. But with all the excuses, we know they're still not excuse. We must seek him daily with a sincere heart. We can endure and keep our focus on him. Seek him at all time. We should be seeking him at all time. Our connection to God. We are connected to God in many ways. God's wisdom, God's sanctification, God's righteousness and redemption. Everything that we are is because of his blood connected with Jesus Christ. The connection with us is permanent and unbreakable. And I, I believe that is um, that is the last slide. I think I did 33. And are there any other comments? I thought I had more than enough, but I see that I didn't. But our connection to God, we, we are connected to God in many ways. He gives us wisdom. He sanctifies, he saves us. We know right from wrong. He tells us when we should do right, when we should do wrong. Everything that we are is because of his blood. If God had not uh, allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, we would be still lost today. I would just like to um, put some focus on and um, for our homework assignment that we had regarding our lesson for today. And it let us know that uh, Samuel is the judge over Israel. And we see justice being administered as the children on Israel repent and overcome their enemies with the help of the Lord. So we got to understand that in order for us to get through and have victory over the battles in our life, that we should understand that we're going to need help. We need help in our everyday life. And he is the one. The Lord will give us the help we need. Our lesson, uh, homework asked us, who was Samuel's mother? <coughs> and this is kind of as a review. Hannah was his mother and Alkanai was his father. And because he asked the, because she asked the Lord for him, Samuel sounds like the Hebrew for heard by God. So God heard Hannah when she prayed for a son. She was barren and God blessed her with Samuel. And it also told us in our uh, study guide, who is the judge of Israel at this time? And that is Samuel. Our, it brought out some of the definitions that we had in our lesson today to just do a little recap on it. Um, Balim, which is means false god. Astaroth, which is fertility goddess. And also Mizpah, which was another word for, we learned in the lesson today, Watchtower, which is a place to celebrate victory. 
And that's what was done in our lesson today. And then the Philistine, that that's, means uh, warlike. These were warlike individuals that did attack. And we learned that in our lesson today. So Samuel tells the children of Israel in 1 Samuel 7 and 3 to repent. And we learned today that in repenting, you cannot just repent outwardly showing others because no one can see your heart, but whatever's on the inside, whatever's in your heart, it will show in your actions. And that's what we have to understand. So the response in 1 Samuel 7 and 4 of the Israelites, their response was that they were, they did repent. So Samuel prayed for them, but however, they had something that they had to do. See, a lot of times we ask people to pray for us. That's and true. in their praying for us, we have to understand that we are, have a responsibility to do some things too. We want someone to pray for us, but are you being obedient in what God told you to do? All right. So we have some comments that we want to recognize. Um, that would be, I think, Deacon Steps, do you have your hand up? Yes. Is there someone uh, else to have your hand up? Okay. Yes, I, I have. My, uh, I was just referring to, uh, in verse, in verse three, where you talk about how the, the people wanted to repent. And, he, and I found a chap, uh, uh, a verse in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 um, verse 13 and it says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. 15 says, For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Least the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye Amen. shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempt him in the side. Ye shall diligently keep his commandments. For the Lord your God and his testimony and his statutes, which he shall command thee. Amen. So Amen. going back to Deuteronomy, referring to that, what was it, chapter uh, <coughs> uh, verse three? I just wanted to bring okay. that up. Amen. That, that is exactly right. That is exactly right. We need to put away all idols regardless of what it is anything you put before god himself you are idolizing it it could be people or things okay all right did someone else have your hand this is dr steps this is sister, yes ma'am this is sister connie i'm on marvella's phone because my phone is is completely out okay uh, okay but i just wanted to add you know in in researching studying this lesson and looking at how the children of Israel have found themselves in a place where they were worshiping like um Deacon Seth is saying worshiping mm -hmm. idol gods and and God is a jealous God but we have to thank God that there is a way to be restored and to come back um they had to repent and their enemies were about to overtake them the Philistines were about to overtake them and um God delivered. God delivered for them. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus being, um, you know, Amen. sitting on the throne next to the Father, making intercession for us. So when we make mistakes, then we can we can repent. Now, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't uh, take grace for granted. But when we do find ourselves in that position, then we need to repent ask the Lord to forgive us. And another important key is, is forgiving yourselves also. So I just wanted to, to add that in into the lesson. Amen. Amen. That's very good. I got to figure good. out how to let the you know. hand down. 
<laughs> it's different when okay. you're on the other side of it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, another thing we want to bring out uh, in one of our questions in our Sunday school was in seven, what did the children of Israel do at Mizpah? And in uh, from 1 Samuel 7 and 6, it tells us that, and they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out. And in that scripture, it was uh, referring to how they poured out their heart. You know, God knows when you are sincere. And the Israelites in their repenting state poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. So we want, I want to make sure we see how we are accountable. When someone is praying for us, like Samuel prayed for the Israelites, they still had a responsibility in that uh, prayer and in them and in him praying for them. We have to realize we have some things that we have to do when we repent. We got to pour out our heart like water and we also have to deny our flesh so our spirit man can grow. And that is helping us in receiving what God has for us. So we got to put ourselves this is very important, a repentant state. We have a responsibility in it. So uh, also in our lesson, it asks us who went up against them in 1 Samuel 7 and 7. And we know that the lords of the Philistines, they were the ones that came against those warlike minded people. So what did the children of Israel tell Samuel to do? They told them to pray pray for them but he also pray when he them. asked the children of Israel to tell Samuel to pray that's right to pray and we know there's power in prayer in sincere prayer it so in our very much powerful that's it that's it so one of the last questions that was asked in our homework was what happened in first samuel 7 10 through 11 and that was samuel offered a burnt offering the lord thundered a great thunder and what it did to them it distracted them it's the the the, the uh scripture tells us and discomfited them so in other words it confused them i have actually been in situations where I prayed, it was a serious situation and the, the enemy that was coming against me got confused on what they were really trying to do. And I could see Christ, you know, the Holy Spirit working in my behalf and just confusing them. And they forgot what they were trying to do. So prayer is necessary and we have to always remember the battle is not ours, so, it's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. <laughs> Any other comments before we close for today? Dr. Step, just one other thing that I want to add. As I was studying this lesson, this song came over me, and y'all know I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to tell you what it is. Come on but with it. it. Come on with it. <laughs> it's God favored me. God yes. favored me. He didn't allow my enemies to triumph over me. Studying That's this it. That's a benefit, <laughs> isn't it? You know, in the, yes, in, in the word, it tells us, don't forget the benefit. <laughs> so people don't understand those benefits that you mm. get when you obey. When you obey God, you repent and you do what he tells you to do, follow instructions. You're going to get some favor. You're going to get some benefits that others might not get. And that in itself is a wonderful thing. That's enough to do it. Do what he said. Amen. So we're thank you, Missionary Gwen, for a wonderful lesson for this morning. We want to thank Good everyone job. that yeah. came in and participated in our lesson. We look forward to our service that we Good will be job. having on uh, today. We know that the Lord has gotten a word just for us, just for us. And I can take it personal and say, just for me. So we're looking forward to our uh, service and our pastor. We're asking the Lord to continue to touch him and cover him 
as he is bringing forth that message just for us today as we meet in person and online today. If there's nothing else, we're just going to pray that the Lord continue to administer justice as he did with our the days of old and with our uh, in our past and we know that he has done for us in our in the old testament and those in the new in the old testament that that were ministered justice we know that he's gonna do it for us amen 